Well, hello, truthful crowd. Welcome in, welcome in. So here I thought I was done for the day. I was getting ready to put my put new socks on and 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 climb up in my bed and watch movies. And um, I to be honest with you, I can't move from the chair I'm in. Uh, the Lord's been talking with me the past fifteen or so minutes. Um, and really, I uh, can't help, I, I just, I always say I can't help it. I can't help it. It's, it's the power of, of Jesus on me, so. That's why I'm holding my head in my hand. Is because I gotta, I think I gotta tell y'all. Hi, Cindy. Hey, Lisa. I think I gotta sit here and do what I always do. So when the Lord talks to me, I gotta basically open up the walkie-talkie and let you hear it, too. Hey, <sighs> so I'm not sure how to handle this, but we'll just try to go forth. Mm, like we do. Um, I have said a lot, and I have made a hundred and some videos, and that's not to brag, it's just I don't have to retell my story, the pages are over there on YouTube, you know. I had a catalyst seven years ago, that was like a twin flame journey, um, then after that I started seeing 1111 and triple numbers and synchronicities, and I started moving, and I guess you could say, air quote, I follow the numbers. And I follow the numbers all the way to the point that it's a holy divine journey. And my original twin flame was Jesus Christ. And I realize that. I also am I'm just gonna strip down here. I'm gonna strip down. This is if this was if I was playing guitar, this would be called uh, you know, strip down acoustic style. Um I've grown this way, and I can't help it. I really did see eleven eleven. I really do experience synchronicities that are above the Einstein would be scratching his head, and you guys know this. So, I understand that it's Christ consciousness. Um, to be really stripped down, about five years ago, when I was coming into knowledge of this, you know, Jesus told me not really, really not to go spreading the word twin flame all over the earth right now, because it was something I kind of kept under my hat. Not because I was embarrassed of it, because he was allowing me to know that it was like a, well, it's a holy journey. It really has his hand in it. It's a holy journey of love, and a lot of people think that twin flame journeys are so they can have the best wedding cake ever and the bestest soulmate ever and it's really not for you but it is for you twin flame journeys completely alchemize you into a completely different person and and it's a holy journey that you are catapulted on and what i've realized is that my true twin flame here my true my true twin flame is jesus christ i was always we are always supposed to be in union with him first and foremost and always, and get our and and receive our happiness and our joy and inspiration. All of that is a great is he's, he is our divine relationship. And as we get into relationship with with the living spirit, he teaches us how to be divine husbands and wives by healing generational wounding, by healing spiritual wounding. Okay, by healing our our bad responses and reactions. Jesus is is working and alchemizing us for years while we become. A divine husbands and wives, and we become um, more imp, imp, you know empathic and, and and have empathy. And being empathic is like being an athlete. It means you can do so many things. Yeah, because I'm an I'm an athletic person. So when you say I'm empath I'm I'm an imp, I'm, I'm empathic. Well, that's almost like being athletic. You can do many many things when you're an empathic person. And so I know this journey to be a very holy one. And it is a love story, and it's a love story about you and Jesus. And right now, I can't help it, like, you guys, <laughs> Lainey here, the real person, um, I sit in my, around my social media, around Facebook, around other, other social media platforms I have, and I just watch silently. And what I've watched happen on YouTube and things like that is, to me, it's, I, I, I can't explain it, and I don't have a reason for it, but I have my boundaries, and that's all I can, I can talk about. But I've watched this Christ conscious, you know, five, seven years ago to ten years ago, be a very um, holy journey and deeply revered. And now there's so much education about it. Now we can just tell someone about it and exponentially move them. Um, I'm watching people do exactly what I, as Red Dirt Preacher, I get noosed for daily is for being of witchcraft and, and being New Age. This very energy that I have received, and I kept Jesus intact, I kept the Holy Spirit in my mouth, and that's why I built the porch. 
Okay. I've watched other people that are from this Christ consciousness. That are from. They're in the consciousness as well. They have a spiritual mantle that matches like mine. I can tell the past, not every time. And if God wants me to see something, He's going to show me something. And you know, I I call them dip backs. I explained that in a couple of videos already, where I just you know I see a vision and I I, I say it out loud. And I'll be darned if it really didn't happen to somebody. Does that make me a psychic? I can't do that on charge, literally. Give me 50 cents and I'll tell you. I can't. Nope. It only comes when it comes. So I was trying for the best of me for many years, including this, this half hour that I've been sitting here with Jesus, uh, trying to decide about how to tell you where I fit in all this mess. And all I can do is tell you my story and what happened to me and how I kept Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit intact and they are the foundation of my journey. However, there are others out there in the world that have received like the same consciousness that I have, the, the we're all one type of thing, and the spiritual gifts that come with it, and the, the consciousness, and all that. You guys know it's a little bit of a magical journey. And I've seen other people put the magic on, on aliens, and, and other, other creeds, and other peoples, and other races in the space, and truly putting it outside of us well I, I understand it's outside of us too but i understand it to be that of the holy spirit nothing else nothing else than that so the porch and me um synonymously stand for yes i'm all about this christ consciousness and that's how i woke up too was 1111 code but i didn't um do what some are doing now which is like i've seen of uh, forums and threads and groups where people are literally trying to sign up to the Twin Flame program. Like, how how can I get on that journey and, and treating it more like it's it's an extra special version of, of a dating site? Um, this really is uh, a holy journey about love, about how to receive love. And God is love and love is God. So it's bigger than us. This, is, this creates um, high math and spiritual math that you have to do in your life. And it's not just a fun ride to get in and see what kind of soulmate you get. So... I'm seeing the, the journey now be devalued, and um, I'm seeing what was and is to me something that is holy and something that is a spiritual mantle and a spiritual anointing in my life. I'm watching other people uh, get on YouTube and buy a pink crystal ball and sit in front and make videos for the fact that they can dip around this consciousness and know things. And, and so, to me, that's just blasphemous. I only get this gift because the Lord allows me to have it. And how dare I go off and make a, make an entire other persona of myself and try to sell you what you need out of me, which is knowledge and information. Mm -mm. I, I think that's what makes a difference between the prophet and the psychic. We both get the same gifts. It's, it's how you use them and what you're doing with them and how pure and humble you stay at the helm of it. So... I just uh, wanted you guys to know that um, it's for all these other things that are taking place where where the living energy and the Christ consciousness gets that disrespect from the mass of the world where they say, oh, you're new age and you're witchcraft. Yeah, I could see why you'd call me that because I share the same gifts that they're using. I'm just not doing it in front of a crystal ball, nor did I have to change my shirt or order preacher gear from eBay.com. I didn't have to order a shrouded hood so I can be a shaman on YouTube. There's things I didn't have to do. I just continued to be me. Whether that's zero degrees or 90 degrees, I sure in the hell didn't do a 180. <laughs> so um, I just wanted you guys to know what the anchor ship is here on the porch. I do see a lot of growth in the, in the consciousness movement. However, you're never going to find me blaming it on aliens. I'm always going to understand that the consciousness is within Christ, and it's Christ consciousness, and that to which I always keep, and that to which I always stay true. I do not give this ability um, and this gift, uh, I don't give the kudos to this gift to anyone else but the, but the living spirit of, of God, you know, to, to which is here now on the land that's moving us, uh, that's alchemizing us, that's waking us up. I, I always will give that credit to Jesus Christ. And the living energy that he is. He never dies. So um, I see where the consciousness is already starting to split and label itself as well. Much like religion did. So consciousness isn't just conscious and spiritual. Isn't just spiritual anymore. It's, it's I'm, 
I'm a white witch, I'm a Wiccan, I'm I'm this slash Gnostic. I'm there's so many labels now I'm getting very confused and all I want to say at the end of the day is hey, I woke up in Christ consciousness and I love Jesus and that's the end of the story and that's the beginning of the story. There's no just I don't do labels here on the porch. And I'm not gonna Egyptianize my Christ consciousness, meaning I'm not going to grow up in Christ consciousness in the way that I have in the past seven years and turn around and give it to some old Egyptian god, Poseidon or Udin or, or something else. I know what this is, and this is of Jesus Christ. So it's very easy for others to walk up and say, oh, the journey you're on is, is of, of the devil. You're a witch or whatever. It's scary. to. Th I can see why. Because just like with everything that was holy, we've taken it, once it falls down here to this dense earth, we do what we do to it. We shred it up, try to define it, put it in boxes, and fight over it. And, and, and that's exactly what is also happening um, in this spiritual growing world that's kind of out there that I'm, I'm peeking and looking into. So, here at home, here on the porch, I'm not going to um, have the idea that any of these spiritual gifts or this Christ consciousness that moves around the earth is in any way Egyptianized into some other god or being or, or force. This is completely, to me, a very holy journey that we all are asked to take. Regardless of what the skin looks like. The skin of it looks like um eleven eleven. The skin of it looks like your divorce. The skin of it looks like you're ostracized by your family. This regardless of the skin of it. The bone of it is disillusion of kingdom. That's in the Bible. The bone of it is paying your ego cost. Debride yourself of your ego so you can live in spirit with Jesus. Uh, that's in the Bible and that's old age and that's the same thing I'm sitting here telling everybody that I'm doing and that I've done and that I'm going to continue to do. You know? So, I just wanted to let you guys know that I do, I do, I don't know how you feel about it, but these, this is, this is, an, the porch is an extension of, of my front porch and, and so this is where I feel and this is where I've always stayed. This journey did teach me in my own house and I never went one time lost the idea of Jesus Christ or the idea of Holy Spirit. So I'm a very spiritual person and I'm down with the chakras and I'm down with this and I'm down with that and I'm also always keeping Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit as my living foundation. That'll never change. You know, that's what gives me the, uh, the spiritual mental and ability and the anointing that He's given me to, to, to revelate on His behalf, to, to let the water flow from my mouth and things like that. So I keep my head down and I keep my head out of the way. And any compliments that you guys give, they go to my sails, not my head. Keeps the sails full. Keeps me working in God. Keeps my knees up straight when they might get wobbly. You know, the world's mean. <laughs> so, I just wanted to make that point. I do see how the twin flame is being, um, oh my gosh, like it's just being batted around the room like it's like it's a toy now. Uh, spiritual consciousness um, as being put off on Egyptian gods and aliens and other things. And I, I always come right back to the full circle. It's Jesus Christ. So here on the porch, if this is your home, know that that's what I stand for. And I'm not going to beat you about the head if that's not where you are. But know that you're not going to change me being who I am in God. Or the way that I perceive that this journey is happening to me. And I'm going to hopefully lead others... Um, into that knowing that it's always Jesus Christ at the end of the day, even when we're going through a spiritual awakening that has amazing things and manifestations and synchronicities and awesomeness in it and, and things that really get your heart pumping and make you feel alive and make you question things and make you believe in the impossible again, make you believe in God's magic again. You know, those are wonderful things. Living in our truth, living in transparency, our authenticity, growing in empathy and patience. These are wonderful fruits of the Spirit. And they're found all along the way on the spiritual path. You know, open the doors to your spiritual awakening and you're going to find the living spirit of Jesus Christ. So, that's just me in a nutshell and that's how I feel. And I feel really saddened by the fact that I'm, I believe this is a really holy journey. And I see others out there doing the very thing of why this doesn't have any value out in the world. You know, you, they're doing the witchcraft thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, they're doing the psychic thing and they're doing it because the consciousness is here. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's making the true holiness of what Christ conscious is not be seen. And so I, as the porch, am just going to stay right here and hopefully hold a Christ consciousness space that is not going to be molested by Egyptian thought processes or Israelite type of bitching or, <laughs> you know, um, aliens and other things. This is from our holy dad. This is a holy curriculum. And it's a great red road. 
And Jesus paved. He was the first one to walk down that road. And so, you know, let's go on to our, let's get out of our old lives and into our new lives. Let's stop trying to go back to where we were. And let's really get courage and go somewhere we've never been together. You know, anyway, that was that. So, um, I just, I think Jesus wanted you guys to know, so there's no, no confusion. Um, cause, cause truth is going to become quite gray, if not already. You need to know where, where uh, uh, the pillars are and the cornerstones here at this church. You need to know. So hopefully that clears things up. So I love you guys. And I'll see you guys later.